in the West Fjords, we find the Queens of Iceland, with a team of women pioneering the way in outdoor adventure and striving towards a more inclusive future for everyone. My name is Inka Fanny Sigurðardóttir. I grew up on a farm in the north of Iceland in the middle of nowhere. It was a sheep farm, so we were taking care of the sheep. I had to take a bus to school for 40 minutes each day and 40 minutes back. I grew up with three siblings, so they were my, also my friends, I guess. There were no other kids around and it wasn't easy to go to visit friends. And I started working on a, in a fish factory when I was 12, as kids did. Back then, it's probably not allowed today. Where I was growing up, the nature was obviously a big part of my childhood. The farm is located in the mountain, so every time I was feeling like not too good or had a lot on my mind or something like that, I would go to the mountain, I had a special rock I would sit on and just think. And then obviously, you know, the, the jobs that go with sheep farming, you know, like uh, collecting the sheep or uh, like we do here in Iceland, uh, like we send them to the mountains in spring, collecting the hay and all of that. So it was more evolved about the jobs at the farm rather than what we would call outdoor activities today. I connected nature to my career. This happened when I was 20. I got a phone call from the CEO of Icelandic Mountain Guides and he asked me, so uh, you speak Spanish and, and you, you're from uh, the countryside. Um, can you go on a trip tomorrow for us? <laughs> uh, so I just decided to, to try that out, but like I was 20 years old and uh, adventurous, you know. And that's when I realized, you know, the other, the other side of the outdoors, uh, not just about sheep herding and, <laughs> and fishing. But I discovered running after I became a mother because I didn't have time to go as much in the mountains. After I had my second child, I was living in a national park up north. I needed some time outdoors in the nature. I cannot be in a house. Even though it's with my wonderful kids, I need to be outdoors. And of course, I've always involved my kids in the, the outdoor lifestyle, but um, I also needed some time for me you know, to, to get out. So I would run the routes instead of hiking them. I guess the double the, the activity or something like that. Running gives me the feeling of freedom. <laughs> you know, you only need your running shoes and I can I can run, I feel like I can run everywhere, you know. If I, I have to get to a place, I can go there running. I can, uh, sometimes I can run away from my thoughts, you know. It's like maybe something, you know, at work or something that's uh, bothering me or I can't find a solution to it. And just going out to run, it kind of gives me a relief, you know. And uh, my kids see it as well. Like we go on a holiday or something. Okay, mom, now you run. And the, when I get back, they are like, you feel good now, right? <laughs> but it also encourages them. They like to run, they like to, you know, ski and bike and everything. Uh, and my daughter is just like me. She has a lot of energy. So I'm trying to show her a way to, for that energy to go. In 2011, I started my first running company. And I think it was in 2014 that uh, I was at the Travel Mart in Reykjavik. And the previous owner of Aurora Arctica contacted me, uh, found me there, and he was like, hey, have you tried running in, 
Hornstrader, Nature Reserve. And I hadn't, and I agreed to join him on uh, the ship to try it out. And I basically just fell in love with the boat life. <laughs> now I live in Isafjörður, the biggest town of the West Fjords. I got more and more involved with uh, our Arctica. Uh, I started at skipper school. I was a mate on the boats, on the ski trips as well. Also helping out at the office. And then, um, then I bought the company. <laughs> I guess when COVID hit in 2020, I had the option to buy our Arctica and I did. The sail and ski trips, they ski from one fjord to the next and meet the boat in the next fjord. Or they go out and ski, come back to the boat as the boat is basically you know, people's home for a week. I guess it's the luxury of not having to pack all your stuff uh, every day and move it to another fjord. The boat is just there, your home, the floatable home. I think I connected with the sailing experience so much because it's also the freedom. Aurora Arctica is a sailboat community. Um, I don't look at it as a company or a business. I look at it as an opportunity to bring people to remote places. Being able to just go wherever you want, basically. You don't have to schedule a bus there. You take the boat where you want to go. I also like the simple lifestyle on the boat because I think we make things a bit complicated, you know, here in town. It doesn't have to be so complicated and you realize that when you go on a boat. You just need the boat, some food and you're good. It, you know, you're out of self-service, uh, no internet, and you realize you don't need it. And, and that, it always takes me, I admit, it always takes me, you know, a couple of days to just like stop looking at my phone. Because um, I'm just so, I guess, addicted to it. It's such a big part of my daily life and uh, my job and everything. So I like that as, as well. You know, you have the excuse to be off the grid. <laughs> We, like there is no signal and I know it's not easy for people to understand that haven't tried this lifestyle. Sometimes I get back to my computer when I get back to town and people are like why aren't you answering me <laughs> and I'm just like oh I was out sailing. It's really not that important. And I think people, they realize this, like they understand when they have tried the, or the boat life lifestyle, they realize what's important and what's not. In post-pandemic period, people are willing to adapt. People are very eager to explore the world again 
People are very aware of their carbon footprint. I think, for example, a lot of the people that come on the boat, they decide to go on the boat because it's more environmental friendly than, um, you know, taking buses everywhere or, or whatever. Um, and it's their only trip of the year, perhaps, you know, like, it's not because they have the time, they have the money, but like they are conscious of their carbon footprint. So they choose this trip and, um, yeah, I, I think people are more aware of um, where they are going and, and what they are going to be doing. My name is Erla Guðni Helgadóttir. I am 28 years old. I'm from Iceland, Reykjavík. I work currently as a ski guide, mountaineering teacher, and geologist. When we are in the faculty, there are certain things that we want to carry at all times. And that's the Holy Trinity. So avalanche, transceiver, shovel and probe. And these three things, they do not work separately. They only work together. So the beacon, I wear it next to my innermost layer. Okay? It's basically, if I'm touring, I don't want to have to take off some layers and then take off the beacon to take off another layer or like to restructure my layer system. Also, if you wear this on the outside and you're in an avalanche, there's nothing that says that this is not just gonna be ripped off you. We have a big playground to work with and when we come here we are essentially just working with the elements. We have some, some plans for the days but things change, especially in Iceland and uh, we just have to definitely have to work with the weather most of the time. What's the point then? Yeah. Okay, how do you do it? What's the point? X, 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 X. For me, being able to go to these places is essential. You know, I don't have to be in a remote place like this all the time, but at least going out into nature, preferably with my skis, it really helps me find my calm, if that makes any sense. If I'm stressed out and I just go skiing for a few days or a couple of days, ski touring, um, it helps me reset and it really is a kind of an essential part of myself, which is kind of strange to say, uh, because it's a sport and if I don't ski over a long period of time or go in the outdoors if there's something rewarding in, the, in nature, I am just half of myself. You know, <laughs> uh, so it it really is essential for me, and yeah, I think a lot of people relate to this feeling. <laughs> It's very important for me to include women in this outdoor community. But it's also because I've had to earn my, my spot. And when I started guiding 20 years old in the mountains, you can imagine, uh, it was, yeah, I had to prove myself much more than the guys. And it has always been like that. And I think this is the story of every woman in the outdoor community. And then of course, there's nothing that comes um, in the place of just observing on site. So in Iceland, we just have so much variable conditions. Um, and even though uh, conditions are a certain way in this part of the this peninsula here, it can be totally different on the other side, even though the avalanche bulletin is saying this for that region. Um, so you have to be your own judge when you're going out there. 
um, observe, you might observe what's on the bulletin, but you might also see something else for sure. I would say that Icelandic ski culture and just in general is like quite inclusive and progressive. There's a lot of really strong women out there doing cool stuff. There's still need to push the boundary, you know, it's still kind of like the mountaineering world and this sort of thing is still kind of male dominated, of course, but yeah, I just know so many awesome women here that are just doing super cool things in all sorts, you know, like whether it's skiing or, or climbing, mountaineering, sailing, you know. So I would say it's maybe easier here than in other places. There's definitely space for us, but we might have to push it a little bit more. I mean, to be honest, uh, there's no other woman at the harbour. I don't know if there's another woman that has a sailboat around here and like, I don't understand why. I think it's just uh, something that is or will slowly be changing. It's not that women can't do it. It's just uh, one of those things that has always been like that. I want to support women in, you know, being at the outdoors and being in the outdoor community. I want to give them a chance with my company and I want to be a role model for them. They can manage a business like our Artica, they can sail a boat, they can be a mountain guide or a ski guide or a running guide, they can found their own companies and that's very important to me. I want my daughter, for example, she's eight today, I want her not to have to fight so much or prove uh, that she can be a part of the outdoor community when she's older. I want to contribute to, to make this more equal community. I think it's important that people realize that you don't have to be an outdoor geek to participate in the outdoor world. And basically, you know, not only having women, but having all sorts of people leading the way helps people realize that. Well, I hope that we will in the future have a more equal world in the outdoors and elsewhere. I hope that in the future there will be like no talk about genders or race or age or anything. Just uh, we all have the same right to enjoy the outdoors. And I hope that we go into that direction rather than analyzing anything. We have to allow people to be the way they are. You don't have to have a, a certain look to be in the outdoor world. You don't have to be of a certain gender or, or anything like that. So I, that's what I hope will be the future.